Have you always had the thought of wanting to tone down your Funko Pop collection, but you're not entirely sure how much your Funko Pops are worth, and you don't have the time to look through the Funko app and see each and every single pop and how much is worth, especially if you're a brand new Funko Pop collector and you don't really know much about the secondary market game? Well, that's where today's video comes in. I'm DK Wrestler, and today I'm going to show you five different ways that you can automatically know if some of your Funko Pops are worth a pretty penny. So the first way to know if a Funko Pop is worth a decent amount of money is if it's a limited piece count. And what I mean by limited piece count is maybe 10k or less, but more specifically 5k or less, because let's admit, a previews exclusive pop that's limited to 30,000 pieces isn't exactly worth a lot of money. And although 30,000 pieces is very limited compared to how many Funko Pops of each character are made by Funko, 30,000 isn't theoretically an actual limited piece count number. That kind of piece count can still be commonly found at various stores, and especially can be found at a pretty decently cheap price on the secondary market. The best example, like I mentioned, are probably your piece counts that are 5k or less and basically a recent example I can mention is that new diamond collection Buzz Lightyear pop and bag bundle where it is limited to 3,000 pieces and the only way you can get that pop is to do a bundle with the bag on the Loungefly website and yes because it is new you're taking advantage of a new pop and selling it for a lot on the secondary market but if you've kept that pop for let's say six months to a year, maybe even two years down the line, it will gain value because it is a super limited piece count item. But then another example is the Plastic Empire Plutonium Marty McFly that was limited to 3,000 pieces. And originally I had the opportunity to buy this pop at around $400 on the secondary market, which was not really in my price range and it was very expensive. But the value of that pop, because it was released about, I want to say two years ago, maybe three at this point, has gained a lot of value. Basically over $300 value to be exact. So even if you paid so much money for for that pop because it's a limited piece and it's been out for a while then the price of that limited piece had really skyrocketed to where you would be able to make profit off of that Funko Pop. The second way to know if your Funko Pop is worth a decent amount of money is if it's an autographed Funko Pop. Now this is one of those cases where you take the phrase of you gotta spend money to make money because obviously if you have a regular Funko Pop and you go get it autographed, you have to pay money to get that said item autographed. But because you made it autographed, you have already made the price of that pop worth more because of the fact that it's signed by, let's say, the person who played the character or even voiced the character if it's like a video game or something. Like I remember Seven Bucks a Pop doing their signature series and they did, I believe, the person who voiced Coco Bandicoot from Crash Bandicoot. That pop itself is not even that expensive. It's like five to ten dollars maybe and that's even in USD pricing. And because you got it autographed by them, then it makes it worth more money. And then there's rare autographs like Stone Cold Steve Austin and Seven bucks a pop also did a signature series on Stone Cold Steve Austin which was pretty sweet and making that pop worth a lot of money because obviously if you had paid that much for a Funko Pop eventually it is going to skyrocket especially at some point if the person unfortunately passes away and I think that unfortunately leads to the third way to know if your Funko Pop's worth a pretty decent penny. The third way to know if your Funko Pop is worth a decent amount of money is because of the death of an actor or actress. Now I want to mention before I continue on discussing about this part of the video is that I do not recommend anyone at all to do this way. This is just a way that I know unfortunately people can take advantage of selling Funko Pops for a pretty penny. Oftentimes when an actor or actress passes away way their Funko Pops will skyrocket in price because people will do that to make a profit. One example I could think of is the actor who played Hagrid in Harry Potter. He unfortunately had passed away within the last year or so, and I know that that six inch pop, even the original one, was around $20, $25 Canadian, which I do own that Funko Pop, and I know for a fact that once he passed away, that pop probably skyrocketed about triple the price, so around 
$60, $65 Canadian. Now, I also do not recommend this way because this trend does not entirely last long. Maybe at most, it's going to last a couple of months because a lot of times, it's all because of the hype around the unfortunate passing of said actor or actress. And another big example of this, and one of the more recent ones, is the unfortunate passing of Jason David Frank. A lot of the Green Ranger Funko Pops have shot up in price because of his unfortunate passing. And especially the NFT Redeemable Pop because not only was it already a grail and 999 pieces, but the passing of Jason David Frank had shot up the value of this pop. And I guess this also brings back to the autograph part of this video because if the person has passed away and you have an autograph pop, and especially, and I should have mentioned this in this part, is that if it is authenticated by let's say a PSA or a COA, this could shoot up the value because you can no longer get an autographed pop from said individual. If you guys are enjoying what you are seeing thus far in this video, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. It definitely helps out with the channel a lot. The fourth way to know that your Funko Pop could be worth a decent amount of money is if it is vaulted. Now for those new to the Funko Pop game and don't know what that term means, it means that a Funko Pop is no longer manufactured by Funko. It is called vaulted where they stop making it and you'll pretty much never see that pop again. Again. However, in the last couple of years, that term is become very loose because a lot of pops that were originally vaulted would then become reproduced again by Funko. An example of that is the flocked Tony Tony Chopper from One Piece that was a 2016 Funimation exclusive, I believe, and in the last year or so has been reproduced with the brand new Funko Special Edition sticker. So sometimes Funko will have a pop that is vaulted from back in the day and and it could be worth a couple of hundred dollars. And then because they are starting to reproduce it again, it drives the value down. In this case, I find that the trend would be if your pop is at least 2015 or older and has been vaulted, then it will most likely stay vaulted. Like examples I can name is Saved by the Bell. A lot of the pops have driven up in price because they no longer make that. Breaking Bad is another example that have not made pops since 2015. A singular pop would be like Viva Vendetta that was made, I believe, 2013, 2014. They haven't made Viva Vendetta pops since. So the price of that has driven up. But yeah, one way to also know that if your pop is that old is that either you check the bottom of the box to see the manufacturing date and it will be stamped on the bottom to tell you what date that it was actually manufactured to the month, the day, and the year. And another way is you take the pop out of the box and you look at the bottom of the foot and you notice on the bottom there, it will show some sort of year on either one of the feet, the year that it was produced. And the fifth way that I think your Funko Pops could be worth a bit of money at the moment is if it's related to a TV show and or movie that either has just started or it is just finishing. A lot of times I notice a trend of where Funko Pops will be sold at a high price because something related to that said thing, whether it is a brand new show starting up or whether it's the finale of the show and there might not be any more Funko Pops made for that. Or example, huge example, is every time an MCU movie trailer comes up and you see a character that either hasn't had a Funko Pop before or hasn't had a Funko Pop for a while, that certain pop will drive up in price because of that said trailer. An example that I can think of is Kang the Conqueror who had appeared in the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer and has had a Funko Pop recently called He Who Remains, which was a part of the Loki series. And because it seems that Kang is going to be a huge focal point now of the MCU that people originally thought that maybe the He Who Remains wouldn't be worth a lot of money but now people are going to really want to get this pop because it goes along with the MCU in a huge way, thus driving up the price of the Funko Pop. And then another example I can give of Pops going up in price because of whether it's a series finale, a movie coming out, or anything like that is Breaking Bad. And a lot of the Pops 
had driven up in price because of the finale of Better Call Saul. So because that series was ending, we'd only gotten one Funko Pop from Better Call Saul. That pop driven up in price. And then the whole entire set of Breaking Bad, because it's related to Better Call Saul, had also driven up in price to where the cheapest pop in the set now is worth around $70 or $80, while the most expensive pop is well over $1,000. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to do the three things like comment and subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next video one two three I'm out of here